What's up guys, Barry Gaming here, back with some more Idle Heroes, and today, oh man, uh, so I woke up at like, I think I was up at like 5 or something with the kids, and I saw that the hero card posted for Cosmic Enforcer Luna. I started reading it when I first woke up, and I'm like, I can't even understand what they're talking about with this hero, there's like 8 keywords. It's like 10 paragraphs for each skill. So we're going to jump into it and try to break it down a little bit more understandable. Granted, the thing with new hero cards nowadays, yes, they give us like the core of origin skill, but we have no clue what any of the sublimation skills are, which can make and break a hero. And we have no clue what the destiny transition skills are which can really make a hero a lot stronger. So let's jump into the skill card. Let's break this down. We're going to start with her passives first because they do try to kind of explain the other abilities just a little bit more because uh, this one is a bit confusing. So hopefully you guys enjoy this one. Let's talk about Cosmic Enforcer Luna. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> So we're not going to start on the front page of the card because there's just so many keywords and things that going over the passives in like reverse order is almost the better option. So let's start down here at the star power overdrive at the beginning of each battle or when self is in the battle as a substitute. If self has a certain amount of energy enters the battle in alpha devastation form, or devastating form uh, effects vary based on the corresponding form. So my guess is if you're this is weird but i think if you're at full energy aka like a splendid melodic strings you're going to be in the offensive form whereas if you come in with less than 100 is my guess you're going to be in suppressed form increases self speed and attack reduces all bonus effects at the end of every round so that almost sounds like a rogan type effect and then we have uh devastation form stacks star core charge to several layers increasing all damage dealt and control immunity reduces all bonuses at the end of each round. So very, very much feeling like a Rogan type hero, but that's pretty much how you decide your form. Let's go to one of the other passives, Sector Coordinated Strike. After an ally releases a basic or active skill, inflicts several layers of structural breakdown. This is gonna be in a skill effect that does different things based on the number of effects. It goes to the target with the lowest HP, which is good. You can see right here, it goes to the lowest HP target. If the target's HP is lower than a certain percentage of max HP, it'll additionally affect more structural breakdown layers and if they're even lower it'll put even more of those layers on after if the target already has that before they'll chase them attack them causing them effects based on which form they're on so if they're in that uh, i guess more defensive form it deals attack damage to the target if they're in devastating form deals damage equal to a certain percentage of their current hp to the target this damage does have probably an attack gap although maybe this is talking about her hp like a valkyrie type skill where she deals damage based on her hp which could be and of course structural breakdown the skill effect uh reduces the target's armor and then if you have more stacks it'll reduce their block it'll then also reduce their damage reduction it'll then also reduce their target's dodge and then eventually they're all damage reduction even more or all damage reduction whereas the other one's damage reduction so this almost feels like a, a Drake type hero for endgame content. So potentially like in Star Expedition, having her on your team as a support hero, stacking structural breakdown on the boss uh, is like a Drake effect, except she could potentially live in the harder game modes. When structural breakdown is stacked to a certain number of layers, it cannot be obtained anymore. So it has a cap and all layers on the target will be removed after several rounds. So they only last a few rounds, which means the hero does need to survive, kind of like Drake as well. It lasts like one extra round after he dies, so yeah. Removes all layers of structural breakdown from enemies when she dies as well. So again, very much like Drake, this is... This hero actually does sound like Drake for once. Like, it's she's either going to be a damage dealer or a Drake hero, and it's interesting to see. Let's go to her next passive, Flexible Overloading. Effects of basic attacks vary based on the form once again. If you're in that suppressed form, aka probably the tanky form, deals attack damage to random enemies, prioritizing choosing those targets with the structural breakdown layers. For every layer of Defied Blade owned, by self additionally bleeds the target for several rounds afterward grant self several layers of defied blade which we'll talk about that here in a second the uh offensive form devastating form deals attack damage to random enemies prioritizing choosing the target with the most layers of structural breakdown 
afterward consumes several rare uh, layers of her star core charge which is another one of her keywords and deal attack damage where the crit is guaranteed to random enemies several times if there's only one boss it could be pretty good prioritizing the target once again with structural breakdown this attack cannot be blocked dodged and cannot be triggered when there is insufficient numbers of star core charges which means we need to talk about the active skill because this is where it all comes together so yes very big skill card Vex vary according to the form so once again deals attack damage to random enemies several times prioritizing choosing the target with the most layers after or for every layer of that defied blade that she has uh deals extra damage more times after we grant self those defied blade layers if self is under overload oak burst which we haven't talked about yet uh deals attack damage where the crit is guaranteed several times and bleeds the target uh, and then again, I think the devastating form is the offensive one kind of deals attack damage to randomly selected enemies, prioritizing choosing the one with the layers. If self has that overload overburst status before dealing damage, deals extra damage equal to a certain percentage of the target's max HP with a cap on her attack first. So it goes first, and then the normal attack happens where it'll inflict damage and then afterwards consumes those star core charges and releases a focus strike dealing damage where the crit is guaranteed several times this attack can be blocked or dodged so very much similar to the basic attack very very similar if self is under overlord uh outburst status after releasing this active skill it removes it and switches you uh the form several times which is interesting i don't know why i said switches the form several times because i think what they're talking about is between these two forms i don't know why i would say several times unless like you can go back like you can go out and back in almost immediately we'll have to see overload outburst skill effect increases self all damage dealt each time after switching form you get that outburst when defied blade is stacked to a certain number <laughs> or there's several cores like it's just so many keywords it gets ridiculous that defied blade we were talking about used to enhance her uh skills and can be owned up to a certain number of layers each form switch will remove all layers during that so She's very much a Drake hero, but also a Star Swordsman Mockman S type hero. And then the core of origin is interesting because it says when switching form restores self HP equal to a percentage of max HP and grants other allies different types of buffs, depending on the form. If you're in the suppressed form, increases speed and attack like Rogan, uh, all reduces all bonus effects at the end of each round. And then the other one increases all damage dealt and control immunity but reduces them again at the end of each round. So there's a lot to break down about this hero, but honestly, the part I'm like most intrigued about is the layers of structural breakdown on a boss, because if this can stack up uh, and it affects everybody, not just her, which we have to clarify, if structural breakdown is applied for everybody, reducing the enemy's armor, block, damage reduction dodge and all damage reduction could be absolutely amazing beyond that she has some okay tenants like they're not amazing i mean she's got like natal or natalie here uh she does have yorm tum which i guess if you're going for like an assassin team sure she's got betty so betty's really good there it's blood betty and then regular yorm tum here is a bit of a letdown so yeah let me know what you think she's uh promising but it really comes down to her sublimations her destiny transition and we'll have to wait until thursday night to see exactly what that's like hopefully you guys enjoy this one let me know what you guys think about this hero she looks cool see you guys next time